If you think depression is the problem, think again. Maybe you're not depressed. With everything that's happening in the world today with COVID-19 and the current pandemic, maybe it is in your gut. COVID-19 is something that has plagued all of us and there's nobody in a position that it hasn't affected in some way. And it's also no secret that depression and suicide rates are at an all-time high. But maybe, just maybe, it's something else. So that's what we'll be talking about today. And maybe it has something to do with your gut and what's going on in your gut. You are not depressed, it's your gut. I'm gonna tell you what's really causing your depression and how you can fix your depression at home, maybe it's anxiety as well, without medication and starting right now. I'm gonna give you some great practical tips on what we can do, so make sure you're staying tuned for the entire video because we have an exciting thing that's happening close to the end of the show today, so it's gonna be fun. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Janine, best-selling author, TV personality, researcher, naturopathic doctor, and a mother of five, not including my husband, of course. Course. and this is going to be a great hour so I'm glad that you're tuning in I would love to hear from you as well so that would be you know fantastic leave your questions and comments below and stay tuned right until the end because we have a fantastic challenge that's happening today so we're starting it off we're kicking it off live in this hour today to get everybody engaged and get everybody feeling better in terms of what's going on in the world with the current situation that is seen <laughs> to be ongoing but hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel so I had a conversation with a woman you know not too long ago and she lives nearby to to where we live and she was you know not doing so well with the current global climate and with the pandemic she is in her late 50s and she lost her husband a couple of years ago and you know she was really really struggling with the pandemic and having to stay home and being feeling isolated because her children couldn't come by with the grandchildren also she used to go out and have her daily walks uh, with a good friend of hers but because of the fear factor of catching the virus she was not able to do her daily walks and she was staying inside a lot on her own and I really felt for her and it was something that you know she she moved me to tears she was crying I was crying because you know she she just couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel with everything going on and again that fear factor she was watching the news a lot and that was one of the first things that I said to her is like Yes, watch the news, get the information that, that you need to get, but then turn it off. If you watch it, you know, hour upon hour throughout the day, that can really have a negative impact, especially with the information that you're being fed on the way that you're feeling and certainly, you know, your levels of depression. So she also had some symptoms of digestive upset and this was, you know, part of what was going on and that's what really prompted me to want to do this show today because there's definitely a correlation with the health of your gut and what's going on with your overall ability to to, you know in from a mental standpoint to be able to fight things off and to be healthy so that, those are the things that I'll share today in this hour and I'm glad that you know you're here with me so when we are talking about you know the global pandemic this is something that it's, it's touched all of us and you're not alone, you know, know that you've got people and that's why I love social media is that you can reach out to people, you can reach out to me and, you know, and my team here at the Dr. Janine Show, we're here for you, we answer your questions and that's why it's important to know that you are not alone and yes we are in this together so you know going back to to my friend and and what she didn't realize was that you know she had a lot of signs of depression that wouldn't classically be signs of depression so there are five or more hidden signs of depression and she had a few of them so she shared with me that she was you know went off the handle she got a little bit irritable um, more more so than not she also had some difficulty with sleeping so she you know had 
difficulty sometimes falling asleep, but if she you know, did fall asleep okay, then she was waking up in the early morning hours and that, that was a challenge for her as well. She also <laughs> confessed that she wasn't eating <laughs> properly. She was really loving all the sweets and as much as she knows that sweets aren't the best thing, um, especially when, you know, you're, you're not feeling so great, um, but that's what we go towards. I mean, I, I think a lot of us are in the same boat. If you're the, that sugar loving person, you're gonna go <laughs> towards all the wrong foods to try to help you feel better and you know check out our whole episode that we did here on YouTube on sugar addiction because that is enlightening how our brain and our dopamine levels in our brain get fired up when we consume sugar and it's this sort of never-ending story of cravings and causing more of that addiction to the sugar which is and we're, we're going to talk about that today about how you know having the proper diet is really important in terms of keeping our microbiome healthy and that has a lot to do with certain brain chemicals to stave off and prevent depression and to treat it as well so again it's all about what's happening in the gut so I know that it's it's been really tough for a lot of us but you know make sure that you know that you don't have to panic there is light at the end of this tunnel and hopefully you know we can all shed some light on the current situation and doing things naturally so stay with me because I'm going to geek out here for a little bit. We're gonna talk about the gut and the connection between the gut microbiome and how that affects the brain, but also the mind. So we're gonna get into some chemistry here and some peptides. We're gonna talk about brain chemicals and we're gonna talk about the microbiome. So if you've heard me speak about the microbiome before, the microbiome is that gut ecology. So what's happening in the gut it has a lot to do with the balance or sometimes imbalance with all of these microorganisms and there's 38 trillion different microbes that we have in our digestive tract in our microbiome and the more that we have of the good ones versus the bad ones this becomes important but this is an important tissue and it's like an endocrine organ on its own so the endocrine cells in the intestinal walls make up a large part of our endocrine system and this is you know this is their chemical signaling that happens in the body and there is something called the gut brain axis so that relationship between the gut and those signals that are going up to the brain and the brain back to the gut this is an important connection that is often downplayed and I think in mainstream medicine so we really have to pay attention to the gut when we're feeling anxious when we're feeling depressed even though we may not know that we're depressed that we are having that healthy gut ecology and that's what this video is all about is getting back that healthy microbiome and then turning on those proper brain chemicals so that we can you know make sure that we're doing the best that we can to stay out of depression so the gut is always communicating with the brain and the microbes are what is carrying that information we also have immune cells so cytokines this is something with COVID-19 that has been in the nude and that cytokine storm which is not a good thing when we're talking about our immune system so how do we regulate all of this how do we make sure that we're maintaining our health so that we don't go down the road in, especially if we pick up a virus into this more inflamed state. We also have gut peptides which I'm going to share a story with you in just a second about you know the research around peptides which is so interesting to me. Hormones as well, nerve signals and light so our microbiome actually gives off light so this is new and emerging research and you know something that I'm super interested in learning more and more about is that that photomodulation of the the that microbiome and that light so we actually give off light from within from our microbiome which is so fascinating and it again is something that it, I hope more and more researchers are looking at because it, there really is this connection with our circadian rhythms and everything that's happening with our gut so we also have the vagus nerve so the vagus nerve takes 80% of that information from the gut 
to the brain. So I would always think that, you know, the vagus nerve coming out of, their, our, out of our brain down to the rest of our body, that it would be a higher percentage in the opposite direction. But 80% of that information is from the vagus is coming from our gut back up to the brain. So food for thought. And then really we're going to talk about food because there is a huge relationship between depression and our diet as well. So this brings me to the story about peptides. So peptides is something that is interesting and it was something that I learned about from a book called Molecules of Emotion and this was written by Candace Pert and she was a researcher um, who as a grad student was the person, so she was the woman who discovered the opiate receptor. And this, and this was in 1972, so this, this was a huge discovery. Now, she never got the real credit for it, and unfortunately, uh, being a woman and being a grad student, so she didn't yet have her degree, she never got the credit for that huge discovery, which later went on to win a Nobel Prize. But at the time, she was the only woman who was working at the NIMH in 1983. So Candace Pert, who unfortunately passed in 2013, this is for you. You know, I read your book and, you know, this was something that it was, it was phenomenal to know that the, these and the molecules of emotion. So emotions definitely affected the gut and the gut affected our emotions. And that whole connection was the, she was one of those women who pioneered this and opened the door to this research of these molecules of emotion. So, and we know that opioids and opioid addiction and opiates, you know, it's, this is a very important thing that we um, are, are, you know, giving credit where credit is due for the fact that it's important that, you know, we know that that connection is there and how we feel affects our gut. You may have experienced this before if you get nervous about something and and you get those butterflies in your stomach, then that's that whole gut-brain connection that you're experiencing in the situation. And she was one of the people um, that she said that, you know, in quotes, the molecules of emotion, she argued, run every system in our body and creating a body-mind's intelligence. So she was all about the body-mind connection and she said that that was wise enough to seek wellness without a great deal of high-tech medical intervention. So knowing that you can tune in and tune into that mind-body connection is something that you have the power to do and that's what, you know, over the episodes that I share here on the Dr. Janine Show, that that's something that we definitely, you know, always, and when I talk about the Dr. G9 truth, we always try to tap in that mind-body connection so that you can heal and you can feel better yourself. So another brain neuropeptide is called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and this is a protein that is produced inside our nerve cells and in the hippocampus of the brain, and it is an important neuropeptide that helps to really ensure that our brain cells are working properly. So when we look at where it's secreted in the hippocampus, what does BDNF does? It's almost like miracle grow for the brain. It's like fertilizer that essentially fertilizes our brain cells to keep them functioning and growing optimally. And not only does it help our memory, but it also helps our self-confidence. And it helps to make sure that we're growing new neurons. So this is important for neuroplasticity. So for someone who's suffered a stroke, that, you know, it's important that we have this BDNF to help with that brain, you know, functioning and firing optimally. People that are low in BDNF, and the studies have shown that this is related to Alzheimer's disease as well as epilepsy, anorexia nervosa, depression of course, which we're talking about now, schizophrenia, and even OCD. So, you know, a lot of these things are directly related to having enough of that BDNF, which is important. And this BDNF is dependent on having a healthy microbiome. So that's why we're here today and that's why we're talking about that gut-brain reaction. We've got to take care of that gut and that microbiome and sometimes you know we have that imbalance which I'm going to demonstrate and if you've seen my demonstration about probiotics before we have some new little critters in here so I'm going to show you that in just a second
second. So I want to do some shout outs. I'm getting messages here. Hi, Sandra, Carolyn, Rahul. Hello, everyone. Katya, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Harvarinder and Mary Thomas. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope you've got some questions, some comments. I've got some fun stuff. So stay tuned right to the end of this episode. I have a, a fantastic challenge that we're going to be doing. And um, I can't wait to, yeah. <laughs> get I, it's, I'm, I'm almost spilling it out what I'm going to be talking about but it's going to be fantastic so coming back to the probiotics so what we want to have ideally when we're talking about a healthy microbiome is we want to have a diversity of the flora in our gut. So this would be a healthy microbiome. So a little bit different if you've watched my presentation before, a little bit different from what I've explained before. And this would be a not so healthy microbiome. You can see why, because we've got some, yeah, they look friendly, but they're not so friendly. So when we've got the parasites, we've got some of those bad bugs in the gut, some bad bacteria, bacteria, maybe some viruses, viral particles that, and, and don't get me wrong, not all viruses are bad. We have thousands and thousands of viruses every day all around us, in us. But, you know, when they can have a negative effect and impact on our body, this is when we become more concerned. And that's why having that healthy microbiome is so important on a day-to-day business. Uh, in terms of our day-to-day -day lives because we want to make sure that we don't have this unhealthy thing happening. So when we're talking about having that healthy microbiome, there's certainly ways that we can ensure that we do this and have it, and we'll get to that in just a second, but ensuring that we have a good diversity of the bugs as well. So it's not so much about, you know, just having one or two kinds of probiotics in our system. We have to have a diversity of a bunch of different bugs in the gut to keep us healthy. And this is important important for our immunity, but also has a lot to do with, again, those peptides and what's happening in terms of our nervous system and those signals that we're sending to the brain in order to keep ourselves ha healthy and, and happy. And that's why, you know, in relationship to depression, this is a big thing. So we want to, you know, maybe not have this happening. We want to get more to the healthy diversity, and we're going to show you how to do that. So stay tuned. That's coming up in just a second. So when we talk about the vagus nerve, so the vagus nerve, again, 80% of that signaling from the vagus nerve is coming from the gut up to the brain. So that just tells you the brain is relying and getting information from the gut all the time. And if it has negative information, then maybe you're not going to be feeling so well. And that's why depression is definitely related to what's going on in the gut. And so how do we help our vagus nerve? Well, the vagus nerve has a lot to do with the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic part of our nervous system. Certainly the sympathetic is that overdrive. It's that type A personality. That's on the go, stressed out all the time, that's not what we want. We want to be in the more relaxed state and this is where meditation, deep breathing, so let's all take a deep breath. We're going to take a couple deep breaths to get us out of the sympathetic and into the parasympathetic. So everybody, just take a few deep breaths and it's amazing how this can really reset your entire nervous system by relaxing. So breathe in. You may want to close your eyes, hold it for a second, and breathe out. And one more breath. Breathing in. And breathing out. And I don't know if you can feel it, but I've had a bit of a stressful morning. It's the same as our crew around here. So I think we all just took a little chill pill right there and that didn't cost anything and it wasn't a medication. So that's something you can do on your own at any time and just relax, bring your nervous system. It's like, you know, tapping back into that part of the parasympathetic nervous system that allows you to relax and, and really, you know, know what's important in terms of your day and to put things into perspective for you. So we also have something called serotonin. So serotonin is our 
feel-good neurotransmitter. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's known as the second brain. The enteric nervous system is known as, as our second brain. And books and studies have been done on this in terms of, you know, that impact that our gut has on our brain and what's happening here. And 90% of our serotonin is made in the gut. So whenever we hear about, oh, serotonin is, you know, it's, it's we want to make sure that we have the enough serotonin because this is our feel-good neurotransmitter. 90% of it is made in the gut. So what does that tell you? Again, the importance of our gut and what's happening here has a lot to do with the way that we feel every day. And that's why it's no surprise why most people who have a lot of digestive issues also have some issues in terms of depression and not feeling well and, and panic attacks and anxiety. So that, you know, again, food for thought. And the good thing is that when the gut is healthy and we have a good flora, then we feel great and when we have enough light. So our, again, when we talk about circadian rhythms and having natural light exposure, this is so important to ensure that our microflora is happy as well and is giving off its own light. We also have to make sure that we have fiber in the diet because fiber is where we get our short chain fatty acids. So these short chain fatty acids, one of them like butyrate, helps to make serotonin. So you can see now why f if you have a poor diet that's lacking in fiber and the standard American diet, the SAD diet, only has roughly 5% fiber. So this is something that, you know, definitely we, I think we can improve on ensuring that we're getting lots of fresh fruits and vegetables in our diet to help to ensure that we're making these short chain fatty acids, which are the precursors to serotonin. And we need about 20 to 40 grams per day of fiber. I don't think you can, well, yes, you can take too much fiber, but let me preface that, but I don't think you can get enough. I mean, if you're eating a healthy diet, you definitely want to make sure that you can sometimes supplement with like a psyllium seed husk uh, fiber supplement, which is soluble and insoluble fiber to ensure that you're getting enough of these precursors to your serotonin. Now, another precursor to serotonin is oysters. And oysters are fantastic. This is one of my newest superfoods that I'm hoping to love soon. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I'm hoping to love soon because they're chock full of DHA, zinc, some vitamin D, and they're just such a multitasker in terms of being able to give it in just, you know, a small dosage, a lot of, you know, these precursors that we need for our whole entire body to function optimally. So, and they also have the precursors for serotonin, so feeling good. Chocolate is another one, so yay for chocolate oysters yeah I'm on the fence about I'm gonna love them but chocolate is a no-brainer for me anybody who knows me knows that I love chocolate especially dark chocolate so this is again no wonder why people feel a little bit better when they <laughs> have some chocolate is that it's helping with the serotonin levels so another precursor to serotonin of course is tryptophan so tryptophan in the diet is something that we can certainly do and one of my little tricks is and it's funny because I sometimes do this intuitively for my kids when they're having being a a rough time, they're stressed about something, is I, I make them oatmeal. I don't know, oatmeal just makes the kids feel better. It makes myself feel better too. So with oatmeal, oats actually help to increase our tryptophan levels. And what you can do, because peanuts also, and bananas, um, also you could add some bananas to this, but peanuts, so I have some peanut butter, and when you add some peanut butter into your oatmeal, that, that you know, another, flavor but it is delicious and it's helping further helping your tryptophan um, to help to make your serotonin so that that would be a really feel-good breakfast a way great way to start off the day adding in that peanut butter and even slicing some bananas like I said in here would be fantastic as well so turkey we know is the obvious choice for tryptophan and that's why people sometimes say that they feel tired um, after their big Christmas meal or their festivities that you know, it's something that is contains natural, you know, tryptophan to help with serotonin levels as well. So hopefully you feel good after that big turkey. Um, but here's the caveat of our serotonin. If you are in a chronically inflamed state, so that could be digestive inflammation, that could be autoimmunity, 
and this is where this all ties into our circadian rhythms and staying healthy. If you are in that inflamed state, what happens is that your body unfortunately could be converting into kynurenine and kynurenine instead of serotonin in terms of that tryptophan breakdown. And kynurenine is something that can then turn into quinolinic acid. And I know I told you I was going to geek out here on, on all these terms. So the quinolinic acid is that a neurotoxin and it's related to depression. So we don't want this whole cascade happening and how to do we may ensure that our tryptophan is turning into serotonin, which is great. I mean, eat the bananas, eat the, eat the peanuts, eat the, uh, the oatmeal to, and the turkey to make sure that you're increasing your serotonin, but how are we going to ensure that that's happening and that it's not gonna go to the kynurenine? The way to do this is exercise. So this is why, again, it's so important to exercise. And I, I think I've said this in every show that we've ever done on the Dr. Janine show is that exercise is of utmost importance to make us feel good. So think about, and I think about my friend who, you know, I spoke with who was really struggling with COVID-19 and being home and the pandemic. And this was something that, you know, she and she wasn't going for her walk anymore with her friend because of the fears of the virus and transmission. And, and this was working again against her because now being more sedentary and maybe she's eating you know some of the some oatmeal or some of the things that will help with her serotonin but she wasn't necessarily converting it to her her serotonin she was probably converting it to the kynurenine and now secreting more of these neurotoxic chemicals in her brain further making the depression worse so again food for thought, things to think about. Um, so when we talk about, you know, why you're depressed and anxious, when we get back to the gut, there could be some causes. And when we talk about antibiotic use, so a study was actually done on the use of antibiotics and the relationship with BDNF. So remember we talked about the BDNF and the importance of having that proper gut-brain access in, and making sure that the BDNF levels were optimized and antibiotics definitely had a relationship with depression and the gut microbiome. Also, we know that stress so stress causes so that doesn't help us in you know in terms of what's going on in the in the world and that's why i say limit your <laughs> exposure to what you're watching on the news and things and those you know negative self-limiting thoughts are not working in your <laughs> favor because unfortunately those all that stress opens up those tight junctions in the gut and that's where the leaky gut syndrome is definitely related to you know not having the proper neurochemicals now and the vagus nerve is not going to be sending the most favorable signals back up to the brain and this is something that we we definitely want to ensure that we're keeping our tight junctions nice and tight if you've got questions on that I'd certainly ask it in the questions and comments below because I can definitely steer you in the right direction of something specifically that can help to repair the gut and get those tight junctions back together again and I have some more <laughs> shout outs hello Brock Peters is here hello thank you for joining Roxy is here as well and Earth is home thank you for tuning in I'm so glad to have you here and Earth is home I know you've got some always some great questions for me so yeah we've been dialoguing a little bit back and forth so thank you for that I love your questions and your comments so getting back to obesity so unfortunately yes the the more obese you become the more altered your microbiome becomes and this means that there's often less diversity in the gut in terms of your good and bad bacteria so you've really you know do your best to you know, get on top of everything that's happening. And that's why hopefully the tips in this video, if you need to check out the other video, like I mentioned earlier on sugar addiction, make sure you check that out. So now the compounded problem with what's going on with COVID-19 and all of the things that we do to protect ourselves. So one of them is hand sanitizers. So hand sanitizers, when we're using a lot of this on a daily basis, what happens is that this is now potentially having a negative impact on our microbiomes. And we have a skin microbiome, but of course the gut microbiome is where I'm going. And <clears throat> the way that 
We get some of our diversity in our body in terms of our microbiome is to ensure that we are always exposing ourselves to microbes and microbes are good. Yes, they are a good thing. So when we're out and about, you know, this is where we get that good, you know, ability to to have that my the microbiome and that more diversity in our microbiome so hand sanitizers maybe yes we can't get away from using them but we have to counteract that and that tip is going to come up in just a second how do we counteract the use of the hand sanitizers we've also been isolated so we've been locked up in our homes with that you know lack of diversity again in the microbiome because we're simply not exposed to everything outside that we once were so and again with no light so being home we're not having enough of that natural light exposure and this has a lot to do with our circadian rhythms remember our, our microbiome is dependent on light as well so do you want to know what i did this morning this is funny because this is just new th information that i'm getting and i i try everything else i'm my own guinea pig so and i was telling the kids about it on the way to school today was that yeah you know what I, and i made them roll down the window in the car to expose their foreheads to the sun i'm like just do it we're at a stoplight just okay okay we're gonna do it so i said and you know what guys what we're also supposed to do and yeah, my kids are young they're at 8 and 11 and and but I explain all this stuff to them as I'm learning and I'm teaching them and I said you know what guys we have to also have to expose our, our tummies to the sun and I'm like mom how are you gonna do that and so my son actually figured it out he's like yeah mom just go in the backyard because I said I don't know what the neighbors are gonna think about me <laughs> exposing my my stomach on you know here in Canada yes we have a heat wave right now um, but come you know mid-January it's not gonna be as easy to expose my midsection to the sun if we if we even have any sun but yeah so I did that today I went back in the backyard exposed yes my forehead but I I exposed my midsection to <laughs> the sun to light up my microbiome and um, it's it's really interesting that yeah the sun has such a huge effect on our body so um, to be able to to do that it's something simple that you can try yourself as well so with being indoors with the pandemic and you know isolating ourselves lack of microbes and we're also not eating out as much anymore and every time you go and enjoy a meal in a restaurant you're exposed to so many different microbes which is not a bad thing it's a good thing we want that diversity in our gut so eating the same foods all the time as well so I think a lot of people are sort of in a routine now you're getting used to staying home and you're getting and and you know buying the same groceries all the time and having the same types of meals you really want to make sure that you are ensuring that diversity in your gut and and maybe you're not even going out to the grocery store to to buy your you know produce like we saw there and your fruits and vegetables maybe you're staying home and you're ordering it in and then again less diversity in your microbiome because you're not exposing yourself to all of these microbes out there so some of my tips now to sort of counteract that you would be able to do better in terms of your microbiome is to certainly get outside and you want to be touching as much as you can so if you can get out into the dirt and imagine that you could start feeling better today just by going out and getting a little bit dirty so you know it seems like a crazy thing but yeah i challenge you I think it's going to be something that you'll find that by exposing yourself to different healthy microbes out there that it will not only help digestion but it will also help you to be you know to start to feel better and there's something about going outside breathing fresh air um, that really does make us feel better my next tip is to get some sun so especially like I said <laughs> you know this morning with my kids that early morning sun so if you can watch the sunrise even better so from the sunrise till about 10 a.m. is when you want to definitely expose as much as your body your skin and especially your pineal gland so your where your third eye is to the sun for as long as you can now if it's if it's gonna be minus 10 degrees Celsius and that's not going to be possible for you you know going into our longer uh, winter months here in Canada but depending on where you live you know 
it doesn't take long. It's only a few seconds that you would need to expose as much as you can, and then uh, you get the added benefit of cooled adaptation, which we are talking about in other shows as well. So that would be a great way, again, to, for you to feel better. Also, open up the windows in your home. So depending on the temperature, I know this can be a challenge sometimes, but by getting some fresh air into your home, this is so, so important for not only the way that you're feeling, but again, for that diversity in your microbiome and that gut brain axis and that those connections there also eat a variety of foods so go if you can go to the grocery store yourself and touch as much produce smell it <laughs> I started to do this as well um, but also buy your groceries from where you live so eating your local diet is very important and this is something that I've really paid attention to a little bit more myself when I'm buying produce now that that is actually grown in Ontario where I live that that's important to me because there's something about the way that your body utilizes the energy from a food from in and knows how to utilize the energy from that food and the electrons in that food uh, when it's grown in the area and in the the climate where you actually live so that is really important for your microbiome as well also, make sure that when you are outside that you take your socks and your shoes off. Get your bare feet onto the ground. This is something I did this morning and when I was sunning my, <laughs> sunning my tummy and my forehead, I took off, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to take off my shoes. So I took off my shoes and I was standing outside on the ground and this helps to ground you. And grounding is a whole other you know show in itself which we will have coming and it's so interesting those electrons from the earth come into your body and are very healing to your body so this helps to decrease inflammation it helps with blood flow uh, it helps on so many fronts and helps your helps to regulate you know the way that you're feeling so it can really be a helpful and again easy tool that you're using in terms of helping with your anxiety or maybe it's your depression as well and all also, there's something that you can listen to, and this is binaural beats. So this is something that you can search up on the internet, um, in right on YouTube. Just search up binaural beats, and there are specific ones for making you feel better, for good mood and depression. And basically, what it is is two different frequencies of sound um, in the music is coming into your brain, and your brain makes up a third sound, and it's almost like a beating that you'll you'll hear. And this is something that is you know phenomenal. In in terms of if you can't sleep, this will help you. If you need it for depression, um, it will really help to, and, and it's working on your brain chemicals to help you feel better. So make sure you try that one out. Hello, we have a question. Earth is home. I'm a night worker. I tend to sleep about four to six hours during the day. Is there anything that I should implement? besides the advice in the video to help my energy. Ah, that's a good one. So the thing with night workers and your altered circadian rhythm is that you want to find a rhythm in what you're doing. So for those four to six hours during the day that you are working, make sure that it's consistent. And as soon as you can see the light of the sun, make sure that you tune your body into the light of the sun. And it's, it's difficult. Sometimes that needs to be reversed and some people use technology with different colored lights and things to, to help them. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's something that you, you definitely, as soon as you can see that light of day, make sure that you are able to do that, but keep your diet on track. Some of the next tips that I'm gonna be sharing in this video in terms of the microbiome and keeping the, making sure that you have enough of the probiotics in your system is important as well. But yeah, that window when you do sleep, make sure it's consistent in the time of day so that your body kind of gets used to that circadian rhythm that you know you, you need to be in for right now. So I hope that helps. Um, so getting back to the gut again and eating a variety of foods, but eating fermented foods. So one of the best fermented foods, if you know, whether you need to go dairy free or 
uh, with full, <laughs> full fat yogurt. I love Greek yogurt because it is a little bit thicker and I just like the flavor profile of Greek yogurt. Um, it's great in recipes as well, but enjoy your yogurt because you're going to get some live and get a high quality yogurt that has some live probiotics in it. And this is because, again, this is really helping with your microbiome. Some other fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut are fantastic as well. And the studies have actually shown that certain probiotics, so lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium bifidum and bifidobacterium longum actually help to increase that BDNF. So remember that was that brain chemical that helps us to feel good and it's actually a natural treatment for, for depression. So making sure that you have enough of these fermented foods is important as well. So Earth is home, this would be, you know, for you, make sure that you have that, those healthy foods in the diet. Another thing that's really important that helps to improve our BDNF are, is DHA, so docosahexaenoic acid, typically from fish sources. So also, you know, here we see salmon, which is fantastic to give us our DHA, but the smaller fish sometimes are better, so things like sardines are, are good as well. Um, and the smaller fish because they concentrate less of the toxins, but also making sure that that DHA has a lot to do with our circadian rhythms and our body's ability to turn that sunlight energy into the energy that it needs. So um, make sure that you have enough of the DHA. If you need to supplement, then you, know, you can certainly do that. There are fantastic, we'll share a link to you know the best supplements for DHA and the one that I take looks just like this um, so fantastic in terms of being able to get concentrated amounts of DHA if you're concerned about the toxicity from the oceans in the fish with mercury and PCBs you don't have to worry about that in this supplement because it's been re removed if, the, if it was in the fish to begin with it's been removed in that very special processing um, we also have to ensure that we get enough vitamin D3 so certainly the sunlight exposure is important but sometimes we need to to supplement. If you live in Canada, if you live north of about 32 degrees latitude, you need to usually supplement if you're not getting enough vitamin D in the diet, which is often very difficult to do. So getting enough of that D3 supplement is important to ensure that you have enough vitamin D. Now in terms of the diet as well, you've got to watch your sugar. So too much sugar in the diet is a problem and this offsets your entire microbiome, feeds the bad bacteria and those bad organisms. They have a party when you feed it. So yeah, everything in moderation, a little bit of sugar. I still have a little bit of my treats here and there. A little bit's okay, but if you're overdoing it, if you're addicted to sugar, make sure you check out our show on sugar addiction. That will really, really help you to first, you know, realize that you have perhaps an issue, an addiction to sugar that you may not have realized, but we have some tips in there to help you to counteract it as well. And exercise. So previously I mentioned about exercise and it's moderate to intense exercise for about 40 minutes is better than 20 minutes of exercise specifically for BDNF and that's what the studies have shown that the BDNF is something that really is, you know, is aided by exercise and we also want to make sure that we are not making um, not turning our tryptophan we want to make sure that we're making it into serotonin which we talked about earlier and that ha happens with exercise which is so important we also know that beta endorphins so that runner's high that people experience with exercise are also o opioids so this is important for making you feel good as well we also have endocannabinoids that are increased with exercise after just 20 minutes so this is why you want to exercise for at least 20 minutes to really help you. And we also want to decrease that risk of the kynurenine, which we talked about earlier, um, from becoming that quinolinic acid from our tryptophan in the diet. So we want to make sure that we're getting that serotonin. So I promised that we were going to come to a part of the show where we have a challenge. So I'm going to grab something really quickly. I'm going to clean this up because this part of the challenge, so you're going to love this, is not something that we've done on the program before. And this is something that I definitely want you to incorporate into your daily routine. And let me just grab my, thank you. So. Thank you. 
here we have some cold water. So remember I talked a little bit about cold adaptation. So the colder you can get, the better it is for your brain and for your anxiety and for your stress. So this, yes, is cold water that has just come out of the fridge. And my helpers here at the Dr. Jean Show, <laughs> they're like, are you going to do that? Are you really going to do that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> So everybody's excited for Dr. Janine to dunk her face. So this is a cold face dunk challenge. Yes, it is. And I want all of you, everybody who's watching, you're going to join this challenge. I want you to take a picture of yourself or have a friend. It might be difficult to do. I was trying to figure out how I would do a selfie of myself doing this, but it is possible. I'm terrible at selfies, but if you have a friend who can take a picture of you doing this, and what I want you to realize is that by doing and by dunking your face in cold cold water and this is an on-the-spot treatment if you are having an anxiety or panic attack you're gonna quickly go and get your ice so always have ice ready you're gonna fill up a bowl you can fill up your your sink in your bathroom I don't care where you do it you're gonna fill up a vessel that can hold some cold water you're gonna get it as cold as possible and you're gonna put your ice to really maximize the benefits of this cold dunk and I want you to send me a picture or a video of you doing this because this is fun and this is this is gonna <laughs> be the next best thing because I to be honest with everything that's going on in the world we all need something that we can do that will help us and there actually is a study that's done so let me just grab the study really quickly if you don't believe me the study that is, indicates that the cold water face immersion helps to decrease our blood pressure so that's important and we know that stress and high blood pressure are definitely correlated so by exposing ourselves to cold and this is specifically our face in cold water not only I've heard from a very wise old woman that this is fantastic for our eyes as well so for our vision super important but also this is a beauty trick so in order to help with our aging process and the longevity and you know not wanting to develop wrinkles and things this is fantastic as well so everybody ready I'm going to pull my hair back. Oh, more shout outs. Hi, Nancy, Ricky, Sabrina, and Circassian. Hello, thank you for tuning in. I'm so glad that you're here, that you're watching this part. Okay, so what all you do is you're going to get your vessel ready, cold, cold water. You're going to dunk your face. So yes, you're holding your breath. You're going to dunk your face for as long as possible. You can time it and hope to increase your times and you can do it multiple times. I'm just going to do it the one time and I'm going to see how long I can hold my breath. So everybody ready? <laughs> I'm kind of excited about this, I'm kind of nervous as, as anything to do this too. Okay, ready? One, two, three. I could have gone longer, guys. All those Wim Hof people. <laughs> How do I look? I'm good? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so if you practice your breath holding anyways, as I do, which I love, oh my goodness, that's so invigorating. Now, ideally, what I would do, but for the sake of time, we're finished for the show, I would go back and do it again. But I'm telling you, it feels, it feels amazing. So if you're suffering with depression and anxiety, I want you to do this. You could do this in the morning first thing to really wake up your senses to feel better. If you're having a bad moment throughout the day, you can do this as well. Okay, are we good? <laughs> okay, great. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And I know um, that you know this is going to be a fun thing for you to do. And if 
Also, if you know someone that this video will help, be sure to share it with them. I would love for you to share it so that they can get in on the challenge and they can get this great information that I shared today. And if this video also helped you to learn something new about depression and that gut brain access, um, it would be great if you could hit that subscribe button, give me a big thumbs up and turn on no notifications. So that means I had to explain this to my dad. Click that bell so that you always know when I'm coming live and sharing this wonderful information information with you and also all of my recipes and everything that we share here on the Dr. Janine show. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in and always be sure to take care of your good health and do it naturally.